Hi, my name is Clinton Weibel and I am the Chief Practices Officer at BTI360. BTI360 has led many software development teams over the years and we believe that Kanban is one of the best agile software development practices in use today. In this fast-paced video, we are going to follow BTI360's Orange Man as he shows us some practical ways to enhance a scrum team using basic Kanban principles. So buckle your seatbelts. Here we go. You might be asking, what is Kanban all about? Well, Kanban is a lean agile methodology that can be used to improve any software development practice like Scrum, which is what we're going to focus on today. You might also be asking, what's up with this word Kanban? Well, Kanban is rooted in the Japanese language. Kan means visual, Ban means card. So we put the two together and we have a visual card that's used to trigger action. An everyday example of a Kanban is a Starbucks cup. When you go to Starbucks and order your favorite Grande Cinnamon Dolce Latte, your local barista takes your order and they write it on your cup. This is a Kanban. The cup is a visual cue to other workers that your order needs to be fulfilled. Now that we've defined the background of Kanban, let's review the Scrum methodology so we can identify points of improvement. Scrum identifies three roles, a product owner who decides what product the delivery team builds, a scrum master who facilitates the delivery team's work, and the delivery team who actually builds the product. The work is done in two to four week increments, called sprints. The product owner prioritizes the work for each sprint, called the sprint backlog. The delivery team then plans and estimates this prioritized sprint backlog, and then begins the sprint. Throughout the sprint, a standing status meeting is held every day called the daily scrum. The delivery team continues this cycle until the sprint ends. Then the delivery team demos potentially shippable software to the product owner. So there you have it, scrum in about 30 seconds. While scrum is widely popular, there are some inefficiencies such as unclear development steps, task switching, and partially done work. Let's follow the orange man to see how Kanban addresses these inefficiencies. To examine unclear development steps, let's take a look at a typical scrum board. The development steps are on deck, in progress, and done. So what does in progress mean anyways? Well this can mean a lot of things to a lot of people. Therefore, it's important to get the delivery team on the same page so that they deliver consistent quality code. Kanban takes care of this issue by visualizing the workflow. Making the workflow visible means anyone can see what's going on. So not only does it keep the delivery team in sync, but it also provides a high level of transparency to all other interested parties. It's important to note here that when choosing the steps in a workflow, make sure to focus on the steps that add value to your customer, and even more importantly, remove those that don't add value. These value-added steps bake quality into the software and reigns in the arch enemy of any software team, the dreaded cowboy coder. Now that we've visualized the workflow, let's move on. Have you ever seen someone juggle five flaming torches at a time? It's awesome. Have you ever seen me try to juggle three tennis balls at a time? It's a total disaster. Constant task switching within a sprint can have similar effects. In general, most people on teams have a hard time focusing on more than one thing at a time. While Scrum does limit the work in progress or WIP to a time box two to four week sprint, the reality is teams end up juggling a bunch of tasks throughout the sprint. This constant task switching is a costly overhead. Kanban addresses this issue by placing whip limits at the work level instead of the two to four week sprint level. The work in progress is limited by assigning a finite capacity to each step in the workflow. For example, let's say task D is complete and we wanted to move it into the review column. Since there are already two tasks in the review column, the team must review task B or C before they can move task D into the review column. As you can see, idle tasks can really get in the way when whip limits are put in place. This brings us to our last inefficiency, partially done work. Scrum values getting a batch of tasks done while Kanban values the flow of completed individual tasks. Think of it this way. Scrum delivers features one bucket at a time, while Kanban delivers features in a steady stream. Because of this, a Scrum board may have several partially done tasks in progress at any one time. Kanban takes care of this problem by focusing on getting a task 100% done instead of a bunch of tasks 80% done. Now let's go back to the Kanban board to illustrate this. Remember our previous example? Due to the whip limit, tasks B and C are holding up the flow of work. Therefore, the team must focus on getting at least one of them 100% done to free up the capacity in the review column. In doing so, not only is the flow of work restored, but two tasks have just been completed. Identifying and eliminating bottlenecks like these early and often is one of the keys to Kanban. In Kanban, the highly visible workflow in whip limits 
cause bottlenecks to service immediately, which allows the team and management to address them before they become a bigger problem. We like to call this on-demand improvement. While Scrum does advocate inspection and adaption, it may take up to two to four weeks before adjustments are made. However, in Kanban, adjustments are made as they surface. It's this on-demand improvement that maximizes the flow of work through the whole system. Now let's review what we have learned. Kanban is a lean, agile methodology that can incrementally improve other methodologies like Scrum. Inefficiencies like unclear development steps are mitigated by visualizing the workflow. Task switching is reduced by limiting the whip at the work level instead of at the sprint level. Finally, partially done work is constricted by emphasizing getting one task 100% done rather than a bunch of tasks 80% done. So there you have it. Hopefully Kanban can help improve your team's performance. But remember, Kanban can help a team go from good to great, but it will not make a bad team good. Before you go, make sure to subscribe to BTI 360's YouTube page for more practical information on Kanban. Thank you for watching, and remember, Kanban, along with BTI 360, is on the move. Thank mm -hmm. you.